Good morning everyone and welcome back to Chef Sherry's plant-based kitchen. You know it's a little bit of a sad day for me today. You know I've been thinking a lot about the tragedies that have happened the last 24 to 48 hours with the tornadoes that ripped through I think five or six states and I'm in one of the states that was affected where people died in an Amazon warehouse uh, because of the storm. So my heart just goes out to everyone that is suffering right now during these holiday times. I know with those of you who celebrate Christmas, it's supposed to be a joyful and peaceful time and it's anything but that for those who are going through this. So just know that my heart does go out to everyone who is affected by this terrible tragedy. But I'd like to make something with you today. So as you know, sometimes it helps to keep busy with things when we're having feelings and we can think about things. So I decided to make some black bean burgers today to share with you while I was sort of thinking about all these people that are suffering today. And I wanted to share with you too, this cookbook that my daughter sent me is called The Plant-Based Cookbook, Vegan, Gluten-Free, Oil-Free Recipes for Lifelong Health. And it was written by Ashley Madden, who is a pharmacist, but now is more into um, spreading the word about plant-based nutrition. So I find her cookbook really informative, and she has some really good recipes. Um, my daughter swears by a lot of them, and I trust her because my daughter is a fabulous plant-based cook as well. So um, we're going to try these black bean burgers today. So I went ahead and prepped a few things as I usually do. And what I did was I took a cup of walnuts and I put them into my food processor and I got them into fine little pieces, as you can see. And then I did the same thing with a cup of red beets. They were raw and I put them into the food processor and then I combined them. So it sort of looks like a crumble. That's how I would describe it. You don't want to get them too mushy, but you don't want big pieces either. So you have to pulse and take off the lid, look, and then keep checking. But that was that. Was that. The only thing that you have to cook ahead of time is your red onion and garlic, which I went ahead and sauteed on the stove with a little bit of water. So that um, that's what that recipe calls for. So we did that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to combine the rest of the ingredients into the food processor. And I'm going to leave my beets and my walnut mixture in the big bowl. We'll be adding the other things. So the first thing we're gonna take is a cup and a half of black beans. Now you can buy them in a can. I am making my own beans now and I find it so easy to do and I love the way they taste. So we're gonna put my one and a half cups of beans that have been cooked already into the food processor. And we're gonna add some gluten-free oats. And again, I will post this recipe on the YouTube channel under the comment section or maybe in the description even. I haven't decided yet, but you'll see it there. And then you won't have to worry about what the ingredient amounts are. So we're gonna put that in, the oats next. Then we've got a couple tablespoons of, I believe this was almond flour. I'm gonna put that in. So for those friends that are gluten-free, they're gonna love you because they can eat all of this. Then I made some brown rice ahead of time. It calls for black rice. And I sent Dale to the grocery store yesterday to look for some. No luck, huh, Dale? Nope. They were out of it. So it says you can substitute brown rice. I even had some quinoa made. I said, well, you probably could use that too. I think you just need something that's a good binder. But we'll use the brown rice today. And then we have our garlic and red onions that have been cooked. They go back into here. Oops, I'm going to spread them out evenly there. And then we have our seasonings, which we'll put in next. And the seasonings are coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, and a little bit of salt. So we'll spread that around the circle here. Okay. And then the last thing is some balsamic vinegar. And I use the best balsamic vinegar that I get from the Olive Tap which is a national chain, but I have it really close by to where I live. So I want to get every last bit in. My hands are clean, of course. I'm just going to take my finger and get all the balsamic vinegar in there. And that's it. So it's a pretty simple recipe. Just wipe my hands up a minute. Now what we're going to do, we're going to combine all this in the food processor. And let me just look at the directions to make sure. It says mix well 
and until most of the black beans are broken up. Okay, so we don't want mush. I guess that's what she's trying to say. Don't make it too mushy. So let me pulse it. And I'm looking, keep going. You can see the black beans are still sort of whole, so I want to get them a little mushy, just a little. A little broken up. Let me take the lid off and look at it now. Sometimes it helps to do that. Let's just move this around. Oh, it's looking pretty good. I see the black beans are still sort of whole, so we're going to go a little more with the pulsing. Okay. Oh, that's perfect, I think. See? You can still see little pieces of black bean in there. Let me show you. Take this out. Can you see that? Still not real mushy. So that's good. Then all you do is you add this to the bowl with your beets and your walnuts. And then we mix it together. And I think we're going to have a very successful black bean burger. Now, I've tried many black bean burgers over the years, and I'm never satisfied with them. So I, I hope this one will, be, will prove me that wrong, that black bean burger can be really delicious, and that this has just the right amount of things in it that will create that wonderful, delicious burger taste. Okay, so I've got that out. Whoops, it's flying all over the kitchen here. Let me move this out of the way so I can get to this. Then I think you just mix it all together. Now there's a restaurant in um, San Francisco. The, what was that called? Do you remember the name of that? I can't remember. And also one in Columbus, Ohio called the, was it the North Star? North Star Cafe, something like that, that makes a burger with beets that we love. So I love beets, so I want to see how this is going to turn out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hands to combine it further. I'll probably have red hands in a second. Yep, I'm going to have the, the beet stain, but that's okay. And that's what they look like. So if you use the black beans, they're going to be a little darker looking, these burgers. But I think this is just fine. So you use whatever you have available to you. It almost looks like I could make a meatloaf. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't it? You could even put that in the oven, I bet, and bake it. But we're going to combine this. And then we're going to um, put them on a baking sheet. And let's see how long do you bake them. Let me wash my hands because I don't want to get my new book all dirty. And I'll tell you how long. My little tie here. Bring this over so we can start putting them on this cookie sheet that's lined with parchment paper. And it says, let's see here, that we're going to bake them at Let's see, 375 degrees, and it says bake them for 40 minutes, and then flip them for another 15, so almost an hour of cooking. So that sounds good. That'll probably get them nice and firm. And it says this, they will firm up as they cool, so um, it, they're very thick right now. So let me just go ahead and make a couple. And you know, I always get my little water bowl ready because I get my hands wet before I touch this so that they, they don't stick. And they should get about seven burgers, she says, out of this recipe. But I'm going to make them sort of small. But oh, they're pretty. What do you think, Dale? Looks good. They're very I'm firm. Hungry. Look at that. They're really firm. So I'm not worried about these falling apart. So let's see how many we can get out of this. I just take a handful. I have a burger press, but we're going to make these a little thicker. So we can put them on a bun with avocado and some onion and lettuce. And then you can add whatever you like, what kind of sauce or mustard and ketchup. Let's see how this goes. They're really easy. I See, I like these because I can tell they're going to be great because they firm up so beautifully. Some burgers, you get them and they start crumbling apart. That's not good. <laughs> That's not a burger to me. What do you think, Dale? I agree. <laughs> okay, so we've got three. I think we're going to get a little bit more than seven. This will be four. So we had a wonderful time at the um, homeless shelter last week, the Vegan Volunteer Corps. We, um, we took chili down there with rice or uh, macaroni, so it was like a chili mac. We had beautiful salad, tossed salad with a couple of beautiful dressings that one of our volunteers made. 
we had these baked apples. As remember, I, I demoed those last Sunday with Harriet, my friend. They love them. Uh, one of the residents asked for the recipe. He wanted to learn how to make them. So it was great. And actually, when we were leaving, we got a standing ovation. People started to clap, and it was just so darling. It was so fun. Um, they're so appreciative of us coming down, and we love being there every month and just spending time with the residents and providing them with delicious, delicious plant foods. So next month, they're going to um, be able to taste Chef Del Sroof's potato dill soup, which is one of my favorite soups. And we'll have a big salad and we'll have some bread and some desserts and who knows what else. But anyway, look, I got nine burgers out of these. So I'm gonna pop them in the oven and I'll show you what they look like. I took a, here's a picture of what they look like once they're baked. I'll show you what it looks like. Actually, I'll show you the one in the book. I think that's better even. So this is what they're gonna look like when they come out of the oven. So I hope you enjoy them, and I do hope that you all will have a very, um, very happy holiday season. And again, sending our loving thoughts and prayers to those who need it the most right now, people going through such heartache. So have a wonderful Sunday, and I'll be back soon with more good recipes at Sherry's Plant-Based Kitchen. So long for now.